All right, guys, we've got Nasir Greer here. We'll open it up for questions in the room first, and then we'll turn it over to Zoom. Nasir, you told us when we got to you a couple weeks before the first day that it's just going to feel good, feel that green grass underneath you. It, you know, the excitement of playing your first game back. Was it the way you thought it was going to feel? Uh, yes, very much. Um, my first steps on that uh, field felt so good. Um, honestly, just felt so blessed in the moment just to be out there and just playing with uh, a group of guys like we have is just incredible. Everybody was encouraging, uh, welcomed me back, and just I just felt the love, and we went out there and ball out as a team, too. What was it like the first time you were able to actually hit your opponent? I felt, it felt good because it was a long fall camp with just hitting each other, so I was just glad when uh, – we got to, uh, I got to hit somebody else for a change. Um, but yeah, it was exciting. Didn't take long for you to get through the first hit, did it? Nah, I guess it didn't. Um, I, I just be locked in, zoned in out there. I don't even really be thinking about it. But really, kickoff, I'm just normally where I get to get my first lick in on somebody. So after kickoff, normally I'm all right for the game. What was the atmosphere kind of like, you know, I was. Reached through your section, it had to be ultra juice feeling. You know, last week. Um, it was very exciting. Um, running out of tunnel, I felt the the fans' energy early. Like uh -huh. in the first series of the game, they were so loud, and we was like, we get to the side, and we like, man, like they they loud today. Like I, it was hard to hear out there a little bit. So that was just exciting that our fans was really like just cheering loud, and we they really came to support us. So you know, you guys are got a few days past that game. What was kind of the evaluation of, of the defensive side and, and what you guys did well and maybe first one at three by one Um, it, we, we saw a lot of things that we wanted to do better, um, but we also uh, congratulated ourselves because we did everything that we wanted to do in a game plan for the week. But it's always little things that we could get better on. And our focus on this week is to mainly keep improving on ourselves and and really any week is is about our self-improvement and not the opponent we playing. So we just we we're gonna take the victory for this week, but we look we look forward after 24 hours. Did you feel like as a defense as a whole, enough guys got the significant reps they needed to get? You guys are trying to break in a lot of those twos and threes that don't have much experience. Yes, guys, guys definitely got in the rotation early and often. Um it was fun just seeing guys out there because, like, third series, I'm not out there. Like, my my backup's in there. And, and we don't even like to really call it the backups or ones and twos. We just like the next group of guys going in there to play. So it was exciting seeing guys get in there and playing and everybody getting their feet wet. Is Evan the one that's right behind you? Yeah, Evan, Evan played behind me. How did you think he did? I think he played good, man. Uh, he actually kind of graded out better than me. Um, I, I'm excited. When he plays good, I feel good. Um, and especially when we win and he's out there, it's, it's amazing. And he was out there in the media of the game, too. So his, his reps are very significant. Is that a, you guys are both from Georgia, both safeties. Is that a Georgia safety connection? Where... Something like that. Uh, it kind of was a connection when we first got in. We kind of just clicked. He's uh, really, really smart. So uh, I enjoy having him around. So what Saturdays look like for you guys when you play? In the middle, like in the week, what's it like for the team? Uh, you saying Saturdays? Yeah, like what's a Saturday like when you guys don't have a have a game when you play earlier in the week? Um, it's it's a day the coaches let us. Uh, normally we do like a lift or something early on, and they pretty much give us a day like to watch, to enjoy college football because you know we normally play on Saturday. So for one Saturday, if we're free, we normally get that Saturday to enjoy college football. Um, just enjoy ourselves. If family's there, like enjoy your time with your family, and it's real chill. You got any former high school teammates that you try to keep tabs on when you get to look at games? Yeah, I got. I actually got a, a lot of college teammates that I keep track on. Some that we I'll be playing like later down the line. Anything else for in the room? All right, we'll turn it over to Zoom here for this year.
Well, Sear, what was uh, maybe one of the biggest things that you think the defense did well that you guys can build on um, and vice versa? What is one of the things that you think you guys need to improve on heading into this week? One thing I could say, uh, we flew around when we was out there. We had guys that uh, put it all out there. We had guys that uh, gave it all, ran fast to the ball. We didn't have many losses um, to improve on. Like I kind of said earlier, uh, just minimizing the uh, mental errors, uh, really uh, grading out better as an entire unit. Um, and if we do that, we continue to get better each week and we'd be unstoppable by the end of the year. Hey, Nasir, um, I don't know if you saw the Louisville Ole Miss game last night. There were four targeting calls. You're one of the hardest hitting guys on the team, if not the hardest hitting. Talk a little bit about, if you would, you know, how you learn to tackle correctly with head up and how your coaches coach you. Um, I, yeah, I did watch that game last night. It's kind of hard, and I know it's frustrating for some guys because when you're playing fast, don't nobody really like me, like the lower their head sometimes because the game, everything happened just in a blink of an eye sometimes. But uh, I really just tried to um, – stay away like from my head on defenders and using my shoulder more like a, a rugby style tackle. And they teach that uh, here, keep your head out of it, put your opposition coach says this all the time, but put your like, see what you hit and make sure your face matches up. And if you see what you hit, they, they won't call a target. Are you better to change the they change the rules for targeting and those guys don't have to go to the locker room and get ejected immediately. But you had to do it thrice. Yes. Um, yeah, leaving the game, it kind of makes you feel like excluded from the team. So I, I'm glad they changed the rule because it's like nobody's trying. Like you don't try to get like a targeting penalty. So you don't want to feel like you got ejected for like fighting or something like that or something that makes you feel like you're not a part of the team no more. So it's like glad uh, you can still be on the sideline uh, and motivate your guys to uh, finish the game. The first half of the Rice was pretty much one of the worst experiences of your college career, other than last year, probably, right? Um, yeah, that game that game was pretty uh, uncomfortable for me because it's like I couldn't warm up out with the team at first. So it was like I had to get warmed up when everybody went in the, the locker room for the second half. So, like, everybody's going in the locker room. I'm coming out to warm up for the game, and it's kind of weird. I want to ask you a little bit about the offense. When the offense is clicking like that, like it did this past week, for you as a defensive unit, what's it like watching them you know, control the game and then, I guess, in some ways, keeping you guys fired up? They're doing their part, helping you out too. Um, it, it's exciting for me, for for one, because those are my boys on offense, man. I love when uh, Sam throws a ball to any one of the guys, uh, AT, uh, Jamal, all those guys, man. All, everybody in the receiving room, the backs, Bill. Um, those those are my other brothers, man. So when they when they're playing good, Taylor, uh, when he's when he's balling out there, uh, I just I just love it, and we all having fun out there, and that makes me want to play better on defense. It's like we just motivate each other. The harder they go, the harder I want to go. It's got to help too. I assume during practice because you're facing these guys, so they, you know, with an iron sharpening iron in a lot of ways. It's got to be a benefit that you guys are playing and compete against each other on a weekly basis, right? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, like during the practice, during the week of practice, we going at it, we competing. All fall camp, we went at each other competing. So, like, when, like, even, like, the offense sometimes get up on the defense, like, the fall camp-wise, and defense sometimes coming after the offense. So, when we finally put it together and we see both sides getting after the other team on, on game day, it's a great feeling um, to see that our, our irons really sharpening each other and, like, the players are really getting better from, like, what we're doing in practice. That's all good. All right, thanks for sharing. No problem. <laughs>
All right, and we have Jasheen Davis here. We'll start in the room and then turn it over to Zoom. Can you move your notes into your bio so you prefer JD? Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess first off, you get Tobe Rookie Player of the Week, the ACC. Um, just kind of take us through that game, you know, the, you know, give that opportunity to play the season over and, you know, kind of coming out on the good side of it. Well, so being that that was my, like, my first game starting, uh, obviously I was a little nervous, a little anxious, but I was also excited. Uh, in the off season, I put in a lot of work, a lot of after hours. And uh, when it came to the game time, it just felt like it was my time to shine. Um, going in, nervous, you know. And then as the game progressed, I got the feel of it. And then that's why I had, like, a great outcome. So. How quickly do you feel like uh, you kind of established confidence in a game? Uh, usually, usually. After the first snap or after a first play I make, um, like I said, um, once I make the play, I feel like I'm, you know, ready to get after it. AC Perry was telling us that uh, he was he was kind of feeling the nerves before the game, like talked to his mother a lot that day. Um, any specific thing you did to try to calm yourself down before you got to the game? Well, um, usually I like to watch or I like to listen to like you know like mellow music or um, even watch like college football on YouTube, you know, to uh, study the game. Like I said, I'm a student of the game. So even before I play a game, I still look up like ways to like get past the defender and stuff like that, you know, just to embed in my mind that um, I can do this and stuff like that, so. So what's your definition of mellow music? Like sometimes, like people like to listen to like rap and stuff. So me, I like to listen to like, you know, R&B, you know, things that slow down, you know, calm my nerves and stuff before a game. Able to tell us anything about what you got a boot on your foot for? Well, uh, I injured my foot during the game, but uh, it's just I'm just wearing it for precaution, so I'm still ready to get after Saturday. I kind of figured that <laughs> you know, they probably wouldn't bring you if you're out for. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How did you hurt it? Was it somebody fall on you? Uh, it was like the first, the first drive on the third down. Yeah, so. So you played through the whole game. Yeah, I played through it. Yeah. You could have. I guess this might be obvious, but did it bother you at all? Not really, no. <laughs> <laughs> so, Justine, as you reviewed the tape, and even as you went through the game, are there any plays you feel you, I mean, you ended up obviously winning co rookie the week, had great stats. Do you feel you left some food on the table? Yeah, especially on that one sack that I had. I used to lift my hands, but other than that, um, I mean, <laughs> it was like, it's a team game, so. Uh, whatever I didn't make, you know, my team helped me finish. So, I mean, I always wanted to get the sack, but, you know, it lived to fight another week, so. What did you hear, like, leading up to the game and then during the game from Rondell as, as you're out there getting started? Well, um, Rondell, he just told me to be the player who I am. Uh, he said that all throughout fall camp, you know, I was dominating. So, it was like, be the player who you are. Don't, uh, don't put on a show for anybody. Just know that you're the best player on the field or feel like you're the best player on the field. So, we're out there with that mentality yet. It showed. Did you think you were going to be out there for like every play in the first half? Because you did get you did get spelled a little bit through the through the half. Well, I mean, of course, I, I don't know. I felt like I was, but I wasn't even tired for real. But <laughs> I mean, sometimes you know, sometimes get the teammate a chance. So, yeah, like I said, it's a team sport, so you know, not good to be selfish. You mentioned being a little nervous in making the start, but. Was it everything you imagined it would be getting a start, playing in front of a crowd like that? Um, I'm sure you had visions of that like before, or you know, even growing up, you know, making a start in big college football. Was it everything you imagined it would be? Yes, I mean, like I said, I used to watch college football on TV all the time. So being the fact that I was actually in a college game in front of real fans, it was a blessing because I never thought I'd make it there. Grow up a fan of anybody in particular, or just absorb all the college football you could. Well, being that I'm from Georgia, I was a Bulldogs fan growing up, but now I just observe all the college football. So I wasn't going to assume the Georgia connection. <laughs> yeah. Did you watch their game? I, did you watch their game Saturday again? I mean, it, it was a pretty, it was a pretty big game. So yeah, I mean, I had to do that just to make sure. As a defensive guy, do you? Appreciate a 10 to 3, you know, neither offense is really able to get anything going type of game more than, say, Taylor might or the, the casual fan might. Yeah, I mean, defense wins championships. So if the offense can't go, it's, you got to put the team on your back. So I feel like that's what they did. And they showed on, on the game.
kind of the same thing I asked this year. Um, I feel like the defense got as many guys into the game as you wanted to see. And I know you, you said you wanted to be out there the whole time, but you got to bring some other guys along too. Yeah. I mean, uh, I feel like we have. Uh, being like like what Nishir said, uh, we got to a pretty good jump. So I feel like it was a good time to, you know, put the reserves in. And I wouldn't, like you said, I wouldn't really call them reserves because we're all good. We're here for a reason. So we just wanted to, you know, like guys like me or, or in my other people in my class, you know, that didn't really experience a college game or didn't really get experience on the, uh, on the field. So we allowed them, like, or coaches allowed them to, you know, get the opportunity. Is there a guy or a couple of guys that, Feeling like you really learned from a lot since you got here on campus. Yeah, well, last year, like I learned from Buggy a lot. I mean, he's playing in the league right now, so sure. so I just I just took my pen and pad and I just wrote down what he did and stuff like that. Things he thought about, you know. Uh, like I said earlier, I still ask him questions to this day about what to do in terms of moves and stuff when when it comes to like certain pass or pass setters. So yeah. But, yeah. When you see like a, a guy like that, for example, like you see the way he maybe approaches studying and kind of getting ready for a game, how does it change, you know, maybe the way that you approach a game or a specific matchup that you're about to see? So, uh, like I said, that uh, I take pen and pad and I study what he does. And what he does is like he he just looks at the matchups, one on one matchups, and he sees how how they pass it, are there high hands, low hands, high shoulders, low. So yeah, that's what I like to do to also. All right, we'll turn it over to Zoom for JD. Did you hear from Boogie after your performance? Yes, sir, I did. What did he uh what did he say? Uh he was like, uh, congrats on the game, you know, made a couple plays. And then he was also it's time to get better, you know. It's all we gotta make a jump from week one to week two. What is your mental I mean, what is driving you to be that best player? What what do you use to kind of drive you to do to play well and to be the best that you can be so when i was six years old that's when i first started playing football and i always had aspirations of going to the college level first and then the league so i feel like now that i'm in the college level i feel like it's, it's actually motivating me because i already completed one goal so now it's time to complete the other one i'm making it to the league how do you duplicate your performance or just continue to get better uh I guess even though I won, you know, co-freshman ACC, uh, you still got to be humble. Uh, that was just one game. Uh, I feel like as I can get better next week. And like I said, that uh, it's all about inches and stuff. You got to stay hungry. So the guy with the better, with the best mentality is always going to come on top. And that's what I'm trying to be. Jasheen, you said you took notes on uh, on Boogie. How how difficult was that to to put what you put down on paper into action once you got out there and, and tried to emulate some of the stuff he did? Uh, really, it's just like to add to my bag. I mean, you can never actually like try to copy or emulate one person's thing. So what I've what I've done is like uh, when I was at home in the off season, I used to go to a pass rush specialist called uh, Chuck Smith, and he used to teach me moves and stuff like that. And now I'm just deepening in my bag so I can be the best player I can be. Thanks. What was that name? Uh, Chuck Smith. Yeah. Where, where is he from? Uh, he's in the Johns Creek area. Okay. Anything else for JD? All right. Appreciate it. Appreciate Thank you, guys. How you doing? Good, how are you? Good. All right, everybody, we've got Taylor Morin here, and we'll open it up for questions in the room, and then uh, over to Zoom. I guess first off, just give us an evaluation of what the offense was able to do on Friday and where you guys go from here. Man, I feel like we, we look great out there. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I expected that from our group, um, considering the numbers that we were able to put up last year, but Every year is a new year, and you got to show up. So um, I'm pleased with how we perform. Coaches were pleased as well, but like uh, Jasheen was saying, you got to take that next step, and because uh, we got a tough road ahead. You kind of talked to a few 
you guys now just about the difference it made to have a crowd and like a really big student section for a while there. Um, I mean, what was that like for you to try to process or, you know, how, how much do you even notice it in the, in the scheme of the game? Man, it was awesome. It was awesome having all those students out there, all those fans out there. Um, it's something we hadn't experienced for, for two years. So I think having all those people out there supporting you, um, it makes a big difference. Um, just the roar of the crowd when a big play happens, um, it can really change the momentum of a game. And yeah, it was, a, it was really cool to see. Can you take stock of the roar of the crowd when you see you're running the kickback? Uh, yeah, no, nah, nah, absolutely. Um, you can hear the roar of the crowd. Um, and honestly, it just gets you going even more because, I mean, I hadn't, I didn't really know what where Jasir was at during that play. I was trying to trying to get a block, and I hear the roar of the crowd. I'm like, all right, something good is happening. Something's good is happening. <laughs> so I gotta stay with it. I gotta stay with it. I gotta find. I gotta find other guys to block. Um, so, yeah, no, it makes a difference. Well, take take us through. I think you're the off. Are you the off returner? Yes, sir. Yeah. Take us through like your role and your. You're seeing that he's bringing the ball out, number one, and he hasn't fair caught it. And then is, is it as chaotic as it looks to us when it's just everybody go find a man and block? Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, kickoff return is one of those things. It's not not necessarily an art. Um, it's <laughs> it's kind of a get what you can get. And luckily, Jasir made two, three guys miss on his own, and we we're able to, to get the cavalry going and uh, get some guys out in front. And props to Jasir for making a heck of a play. Glad I could just play helping hand in it. <laughs> Do people realize how just crazy it is that that was his first kick return in the game and he took it back? I, yeah, I mean, it's insane. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back on it, I'm like, I'm really thinking, because I've only been here for, for a couple of years now. I, I didn't know if Jasir had ever done that before, and then I get I catch wind of it that, that it was the first one. I'm like, <laughs> I do remember Jasir having said that his first one that he that he caught, he was he was going taking it to the crib. So <laughs> it's pretty cool that he followed through with that. So okay, because he told us after the game that he wasn't supposed to take it out. Because I guess is it fair catch everything inside the five? Yeah, I mean it was it was a gray it was a gray area with with that decision. <laughs> but I mean, who you can't blame him. He, he made a play. Yeah, so. nobody's nobody <laughs> issue with it. Now. Right. Yeah. So and it was a line drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we had some time to get some blocks set up. Taylor, if you guys uh, reviewed the, the offensive play from, from Friday, what are some of the things you all keyed on that, that could use a little bit of improvement, fine tuning? I'd probably say the number one thing was taking care of the ball. We had a couple instances where the ball started getting loose. And, and as a program, we pride ourselves on taking care of the football. So we saw, I think we had lost one fumble, but Luckily, it didn't it didn't cost us. But go, coming down the road here in ACC play, we we gotta we, we gotta take care of the football. So the offense has been focused for years now. What makes it so difficult for opponents to just model up? What is it about the offense that you guys have had so much success over the last couple of years? Yeah, no. So I think probably the number one reason is that we're able to change from week to week. We're able to evolve and. Props to Coach R. He's he's really a guru when it comes comes to that stuff. Um, so we're we're gonna figure out what the opposing team does does best, and we're gonna figure out how we match up match up with them. So and and find find the holes in their defense. And it's really hard to to figure out what we're gonna do on a weekly basis just because we're changing so much. Perfect. We'll turn it over to Zoom here. Anything for Taylor on Zoom? All right. You guys got anything else for Taylor before he gets up? <laughs> 